This is Simple Living with Beata. I'm building my dream home and homestead from scratch with very little experience. And in this week's video, we're doing things a little bit differently. Last week, I forgot an entire day's worth of content and this missing content can't go into Sunday's video. <laughs> So I decided to create a whole new video that's gonna have the missing content and a Q&A at the end with all of the questions that you guys asked me. Yay for bonus content. All right, let's get started. It is our long weekend Monday in Canada. So I have my husband here, my daughter's at day camp, and we're gonna get a ton of work done today. Okay, I have provided Cam a cut list. <laughs> So he's gonna cut my jack studs and headers and stuff while I lay out the first wall of the day. And I already marked it out, which makes it super easy. So hopefully this day will fly by. And by fly by, I mean, I hope we get a lot of work done today. <laughs> get in trouble for pulling that up. Stand? Yeah. Look, this stuck here in the middle of like, like they don't roll nicely. Hmm. In the middle of a cut is more annoying to me. And I know enough that I can do that with my thumb and nothing's gonna happen to me. Uh, okay. I've been on sites where the guys take these off. Ah, uh, that's a little sketch, but. And especially when you're doing cabinetry, you don't want anything to with your cut. Hmm. You're cutting crown, you're doing this. Oh, okay. But higher. I usually do that. Really? Yeah. But like sometimes these just get stuck. Okay. Right there. And then you have to do that. Oh. Right? Oh. And then you get a cut that's like got that chunk at the end. Right. So I just get in the habit of doing it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Cam has all the wood cut. So as I start nailing these walls together, he's gonna get up on the mini scaffolding, pull himself along, and tape the top edges of the house wrap. <laughs> Don't try to go around the pipe, the wheelbarrow's in the way. <laughs> All right, wall number one is done, the hardest wall of the day, and the other two should be pretty simple. All the walls are framed, almost. All the interior load-bearing walls are framed and can finish taping. <laughs> okay, we are gonna lift these now. And it's only 12.30, like this is, this is going well. Famous last words. <laughs> We're gonna leave the header out of this wall because the header is actually overlapping onto this wall. It was the only way I could figure out how to get a wall partition in there. One more wall. Aww, hey. yeah. So we're gonna get this all nailed into place. The issue is we definitely have like a pretty big gap here and it's mainly because there's a hump in the concrete which needs to be fixed still, but we need to get our framing done so that we can move on to the rafters so that we can get our trusses in time. And I haven't been able to get a grinder in, so it's kind of just the way it is at this point. And we're gonna try to clamp it together and see how it goes. So we're level up to there. And like, that's, that's pretty significant where the hump is. It's out a lot and then it, like kind of comes back down here and like swoops down that way. I'm trying to get someone to come out and fix it and it's just not happened for like three weeks. And so there's a significant hump and I really don't want, know what to do. I don't want to move forward with there being such a big hump because our roof line is going to look ridiculous. 
So we're level here. There's still a gap here. We're clamped together here, but like, look at that. That's pretty bad. All right, the walls, the two of them are coming back down until we can get the concrete fixed because I, I can't imagine just leaving the wall like that. There's no way. Well, I wanted to get the interior load bearing walls done for you this week, but that is just not gonna happen. I'm gonna work on some other interior walls until I can get that part of the floor knocked down, and then I will start the roof rafters. So the hump in the concrete sucks, and I'm gonna figure it out, but you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. I'm gonna do the Q&A now. So the first question is, how did you decide on the location of your home near the wetlands? Slash, why did you choose the wetlands? Is it because the wetlands are cheaper? So first of all, when we were looking for land, we did look for wetlands. Yes, because it's cheaper. There is a misconception about wetlands creating more mosquitoes and more black flies. But if you have healthy wetlands, it actually creates a healthy environment and a healthy ecosystem, which then brings in more frogs and more dragonflies. So healthy wetlands actually decreases your mosquito and black fly population. But the reason we wanted land with wetlands is because wetlands are super nutrient dense and we're actually gonna build wetland gardens called chinampas. This is probably not gonna be done until next year, maybe even the year after. I have a lot of homesteading plans here, but basically you take soil from the wetlands and you bring it up and it has amazing nutrients and you have a natural irrigation system. Our wetlands are not actually environmentally protected, so we can go in there and take trees down and we can adjust it a little bit. But of course, we're not looking to destroy our wetlands, so we're making little changes over time. Next question is, what has been the hardest thing to learn so far? Slash, what is the biggest lesson you've learned since starting the building process? So this is a two-part question for me. The hardest trade for me to learn was actually plumbing. It was more the plumbing layout. So putting the pipes together wasn't the hard part. It was learning how a plumbing system works, how venting systems work. So I actually took an online layout course and I asked my friend who was a plumber a ton of questions and he helped answer those questions. The biggest lesson I've learned so far, well, that is a loaded question, and this is more of an emotional answer for me, so I'm gonna name off a few. So one of the biggest ones is to try to not feel guilty about this current season in my life. I don't have the same capacity for friends and family that I did before during this intense part of the build. Number two is some people are not going to understand the load that I have on me from learning how to build to actually doing the physical and manual labor to editing that takes like a good 12 hours a week and to being an influencer and to being a mom and a wife. I absolutely love my job. It's just, it can be a lot of work in this season as I'm actively building. And it's okay that some people won't understand this and it's okay to let those relationships go. Number three is to accept free help and not feel guilty about free help. Some of my friends just genuinely want to help and won't accept anything in return. And they are incredibly gracious people and I don't wanna take advantage of them. And it's a busy season right now, so I feel like I can't offer much in return. But sometimes life has a give and take balance. And when you have the capacity to be able to help others, I think it's important to be able to give back in any way you can. And number four is to take breaks and to take care of myself. This is an ongoing learning process. I'm not very good at it, but even today, it's a rainy day today. I'm actually taking the day off of doing physical labor because sometimes my body and my mind just needs a rest. Next question is, why did you select your current tools over other brands of tools? So first of all, I love still chainsaws and even that concrete cutter I used, the still one was incredible. I also have always purchased DeWalt. Um, I think that's how I kind of first started out with my drills and because I had batteries for them, I started buying other DeWalt products. I enjoy their products. My husband is a big advocate of just buying the best tool for the job and not being extremely brand loyal. So if one company makes one tool better than the other, go with the company that makes the better tool. And the way you're gonna learn all of this stuff is by asking your skilled tradespeople questions. 
asking friends, asking family, asking people on social media about a specific tool. Next question is how do you clear the building thoughts from your head at the end of a day and enjoy and relax your family? So this is one of the hardest things to do. I feel pretty guilty because I'm not great at it. To be honest, whenever I'm deep within my thoughts, I'm thinking about the build, but I absolutely love going on hikes with my family. My husband and I have great conversations in our car rides and after our daughter goes to bed. And I love going on walks with our daughter and playing board games with her as well. And honestly, a lot of the times lately, we've been having movie nights on weekends, which has been really fun for the family. As long as I'm done editing my video, I can just sit and watch a movie with my family, which that is really nice when I get the opportunity to do that. Next question is how did you find your architect and do you still communicate throughout the build? So I found my architect basically by posting on our local buy and sells. I just said, hey, looking for a local architect, what are your recommendations? And I connected with someone who actually is a mutual friend to one of my family members. So that was great. Yes, I communicate with him throughout the build if I have questions. And I actually bought my windows through him for a very good price. So definitely working with someone local is your best bet for any sort of architecture work. Next up, I'm gonna do some really quick questions and really quick answers. Do you still swim and what's your favorite event to race? I do not still competitively swim. We actually don't have a pool in our area, but my favorite race was anything long distance. So the 400 to 800 meter swims, I'm pretty good at endurance. And I actually really liked the butterfly stroke. You mentioned in the last one of your videos that a well brings you closer to bringing your trailer here. And are you hoping to be able to move the trailer here before the end of the summer? The answer to that is yes. I'm feeling very overwhelmed by it because that means I have to have the plumbing in and the filter in. Short answer, yes. I would like to have the trailer here by the end of the summer. It'll make building so much easier. I have a question about the line across our driveway. It is a bell line. They're asking, can you move it, either prop it up permanently with higher poles or can you bury it underground? I don't think I can bury it underground and I could pay bell to boost those lines up by putting in new poles, but I'm not interested in paying the fees for that. Once all the construction's done, we'll just take those temporary poles down. What sort of heat control are you planning for the house? So we have in-floor heating lines under our concrete. We're gonna have an outdoor wood boiler with a propane backup. That way it's not considered technically off-grid and we can get better insurance for it. How long have you and your husband Cam been together? So we just had our 10th date anniversary this past February and we'll have been married for nine years this summer. The next question is about my husband again. Why does he not help you more? And is he working a full-time job? He is working a full-time job as a cabinet installer. He works Monday to Friday. So anytime that we have available, he comes and helps me on weekends if we can find someone to watch our daughter or if we can find a friend for her to come here and play. And I have a feeling the sooner we get here, the more he can help. But his boss has been pretty lenient. If there's just makeshift work for Cam to do, his boss has been like, go to the property, go help build. So that's been really nice. What are some recommended channels for framing advice? My favorite channel is the Perkins Builder Brothers. I learned how to frame through them. I get all of my advice from them and obviously local framing code books are great as well. Has building your home helped with core strength and cardio? Building my home, oh my gosh, I'm looking at videos from before to now. My arms are so much bigger and my core is so much stronger. I don't necessarily do a lot of cardio, but definitely helps with strength. Where are you building? We are building in Ontario, Canada. I don't give specifics just for safety reasons. And are you First Nations slash Indigenous? I am maybe a 16th on both sides of my family. I'm actually mainly a quarter British and then I'm a mix of a lot of different things. I don't necessarily know where all the tan skin comes from, but I'm pretty sure it is my First Nations side. Other than that, I'm a pretty well mixed Canadian. <laughs> the big question is when will your house be ready and when will you be able to move in? And what is your project finish date? So we are hoping to be able to hybrid live in here in the winter. I don't expect everything to be completely done, but we're gonna have the trailer here. Even if we don't have a kitchen in the house, we'll have a kitchen in the trailer. We'll be able to have a dining table in here and eat in here. I think hybrid living is the best way to mentally handle the next season that's to come so that we're not absolutely destroying ourselves physically and mentally to try to get this done before winter. 
but we'll have the heat on in here and we'll likely have drywall in. So we'll be able to throw a few beds in and then we can renovate each room as we go. Next question is how is your budget going? What's your current budget? and what are your costs so far? So all of these answers are gonna be in Canadian dollars, so it might sound more expensive to you if you live in the US. Honestly, my budget isn't going great since my first budget plan, but times change, materials change, and that's okay. Two years ago, we sold our home with a mortgage of $140,000. We made a $225,000 profit. We basically just made a really good decision in our early 20s to buy a house for really cheap and we took advantage of the market prices that happened during COVID. We lived in a trailer for two years. We bought our land for 110,000, which is cheap for 18 acres in Ontario. Very, very cheap. So with that $225,000, we bought our land for 110,000. We put in a septic bed for about 10 grand. We put in our driveway for $15,000. We built our shed for about six grand. I dropped all of the trees for a new chainsaw, the chains and some gas and an excavator rental. So maybe two grand. We put all of the gravel work in under the foundation, which was $10,000 of gravel. I did the plumbing under the foundation, which I think was about $3,000. We brought in electricity, which was about $25,000 and we bought a trailer and renovated it, which again was another $25,000. So to that point, we had completely wiped out all of our money. We got pretty far with it. After we went through that $225,000, we put in the rebar and the mesh, that was about four grand. The form boards cost me maybe $1,500, but I'll be reusing them. The concrete cost me $13,000. That was an expensive one. The framing and truss package came to a total of 25,000 and the windows came to a total of 25,000 and we bought our wood boiler for 10 grand and we paid for our drilled well that was $15,000. So I think right now we're at about $87,000 in debt with a budget of $180,000. So we have about like 92 to $93,000 left. We also need to buy our lumber for our front deck. So we'll see where we go. The other thing is the more people who watch this, the more money I make, the easier I can pay down our line of credit and maybe the smaller our mortgage will be. So thank you guys for watching because that has been absolutely incredible to help us build our home. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I gotta run and I will see you Sunday morning. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to them. And with that, I will see you in a few days on Sunday, every Sunday around 10 a.m. I'll see you then. Bye.